Hi, I'm Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, this time looking at a portable radio, actually an expensive portable radio called the Tivoli Songbook. Now I have to tell you something, I am an absolute radio nut. I've been collecting radios since I was in about fifth or sixth grade, and I'm a lot older than that now. And so I've come across a lot of different radios. And although I'm not an engineer or anything like that, I'm just a country doctor, um, I do have a lot of experience with, with radios, and I can tell a good one when I see one. And this really is a very good radio. Recently, I was given an opportunity to buy one at about half price. Half price for this radio is about $100, so it's a very pricey radio. And I thought I would share with you some of my experience with it. But to make it a little more valid, I wanted to find another radio in my collection that was somewhat similar so we could have a point of reference. And so what we're really going to do is we're going to compare this radio, which is the Tivoli Songbook, with this radio, the Sanjian PRD5. This radio sells for about $100, this one about $200 retail, so it's not an absolutely fair comparison, but they're both very highly engineered quality radios. And what we're going to look at is style, power supplies, clock, FM, AM, sound, and features. So let's get started. Style, you can see they're both kind of minimalist style radios, very attractive in their own way. But you know, the songbook here comes in a variety of colors. The plastic has been sprayed with this rubberized material. It's kind of this nice lunchbox kind of look. Um, and so I'd have to give style to the songbook. So songbook wins on style. Well, what about the next option, which is power supplies? Well, both of these operate on batteries and also AC power supply, which is great. On the pad side, both of them use six cells, so you have to buy a lot of batteries. This uses six AA's, this uses six uh, C batteries. Good news with this one is you can use rechargeable batteries, but you have to buy them separately. I bought these nice Duracell oh, 2650 hour batteries, so pretty good batteries. What I'll tell you is it takes forever to charge, and the charge does not last that long. So, for instance, if you were going to take this for a week trip, Someplace you definitely would have to bring the charger. On the other hand, the Sanjian doesn't use a rechargeable system, but the C batteries last for up to 70 to 80 hours, so you get a lot of use out of those batteries. So that gives that one a little plus there. Both use enormous wall warts, they do not have internal um, little uh, power adapters. So I would say that power supply is adequate for both. In, in my estimation, it's a tie. Um, actually, I kind of like this one a little bit better, but I'm going to give it a tie. Okay, the next feature, clock. Now, if you look at the ad for the songbird, or, or the songbook, songbird, songbook um, it, boy, it says, oh, you can use it as a clock radio, you can use it as a portable radio, a kitchen radio, a bedroom radio. You know, it's sort of like saying a frying pan can scramble, fry, and stir fry or something. Of course, it's a portable radio. But um, the clock in here is pretty average. You get a clock, you can set an alarm to buzzer or to radio, um, you can set a sleep timer on here. Sleep timer will only set to 20 minutes, no other variation. Same thing with this radio. It has very similar features. Nice thing about this radio is you can actually set the sleep timer to 120, an hour, 50 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you like. So based on that one feature, I would say I, I give the nod to the Sanjian. However, don't expect this to replace your, oops, <laughs> don't expect this to replace your clock radio. These are very rudimentary radios as far as clock radios go. They don't even have a snooze bar. So that $10 radio that you get from Kmart will have more clock radio features than either of these radios, but they work in a pinch. Okay, what about FM performance? Now, when we look at AM and FM performance, we want to talk about a couple things, but two things that are really important. One is something called sensitivity. The other one is something called selectivity. Sensitivity means how sensitive is that receiver? Cheap radios are pretty deaf. They can hear local strong stations, but if you want to get out there with a the fringe station, forget it. So a highly sensitive radio is something that you want when, when it comes to a premium 
radio. At the same time, you want a radio that's pretty selective. Selectivity means that it receives that radio station and not a, lo not a lot of other adjacent stations. So if you have a big strong station here and right next to it on the dial here you have a weaker station, you want to be able to hear this weaker station in a clear fashion. If this station is uh, blurring and, and, and moving over to that station, it's going to make it a very unenjoyable experience. So, we, so a selective radio is good. A radio that's not so selective is not so good. Both of these radios have very good sensitivity and selectivity. I live in a very fringe area in a valley. Now, I live in Illinois, so there's not a lot of real valleys, but we're in a depression, you can say. And I'm about 35 miles out of Chicago, so I'm kind of in a fringy area. Both of these radios do a great job. Um, what I did was I went across the uh, FM band and I took segments and I, I kind of basically saw how many clear stations could I receive at various points along the band. Great job, but you know what? Excellent job. In fact, this radio had phenomenal sensitivity and selectivity. I would say as good as my real clock radio, which is an old Boston Acoustics um, wave receptor, which has phenomenal FM reception. This one was right up there. So if you're looking for a very good FM radio, fantastic, fantastic radio. Well, what about AM? Well, AM, same thing, sensitivity, selectivity. And both of these radios took different kind of uh, paths. This radio was designed by the engineers to give you the to absolutely top level AM reception for a consumer product. Uh, so this means that with this radio at nighttime, you can tune between your big strong local stations and get all over the place. So for instance, I can listen to New York and Colorado and Georgia and Texas and everything from my Chicago location. This radio, so it's very sensitive, but it's also very selective. This radio is reasonably sensitive, certainly much more than a cheap radio, but its selectivity is not so great. And I think Tivoli did that for a reason, for, because if you, if you have a radio that's not very selective, it actually an AM picks up a little wider swatch of the band, and it sounds like it has a little more fidelity. Um, I personally think that this is the better trade-off because you're really getting a high-performance radio here. This one will sound a little bit better if you're just listening to a local station, but the nod goes to the Sanjian.